Today's Versus Live is going to be concluded with two new decks featuring cards for Ravnica and Allegiance in Modern. Uh, we're going to see just how powerful they are. The card you're playing in your deck, the new one, uh, has been getting a lot of hype lately. Tell us about it. It is Elector Dominance, a card that pairs well with the Cycle of Time Spiral block. Uh, suspend cards that don't have an actual converted mana cost. And Elector Dominance lets you cast them, even if you cast the Elector Dominance for zero. So for two mana, you can cast Restore Balance or Ancestral Vision in this deck. I've also seen some lists with Living End. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have As Foretold as another enabler that's a little more expensive. And uh, to combine with Restore Balance, you play one of my favorite cards of all time, Greater Gargadon. So the, the idea is to be able to turn one a Greater Gargadon Interact little through the course of the game. Once your opponent builds a battlefield, cast your Electro Dominance into Restore Balance or Asphalt Hold into Restore Balance. Put the Restore Balance in the stack, hold priority, sacrifice all your lands and other creatures to Greater Gargadon, and then have your opponent's battlefield be completely wiped out, no lands. Hopefully leave the Gargadon in one, and then the, the following turn, it'll come in and be a 9-7 haste and close out the game before they can recover. This deck with Ancestral Vision, you can sort of play a long game, you draw a bunch of cards. Now, alternatively, what you can do is you can, uh, like, float all your mana, sack all your things, remove the last counter from Gargadon, and with Gargadon on the stack, then Electro Dominus Restore Balance, and then you get to attack with the Gargadon. That is another good way. Yeah, most of the time, uh, the the way that uh, Sean McLaren has built this deck, um, he, he's the one who went 5-0 with this on, on Magic Online, Um he built it way more like a control deck. It plays a lot like uh, a Splinter Twin variant where you kind of can nickel and dime them with like spy removal or counter spells or whatever you want to do. Play some card draw here and there. And then when your opponent's defenses are down, you just use balance like a, like a wrath effect sometimes, you know, like if you yep. if you need to. But if you have Gargadon, then it becomes like a obliterate that leaves you with a 9-7. And that's yes. pretty ridiculous. And it, even if, uh, even if you, say you don't have enough counters to get the 9-7 in to play that quickly. If you're left with an As Foretold or two, you can start casting spells even with no lands, whereas your opponent can't. Right. Because Restore Balance affects, what, hand, lands, and creatures? Yes. Yeah, those three things are uh, not enchantments. And uh, most of your things are instants, so As Foretold does let you cast those for free, which is pretty cool. Uh, what I'm going to be doing today from my side is uh, we're going to be playing a control deck uh, built around Wilderness Reclamation. Now, uh, for those of you who know me, you know that I have been talking about Wilderness Reclamation a lot lately. Uh, specifically today in Standard, I have an article on Star City Games Premium. If you want to go check that out, it's up right now. It has a bunch of Wilderness Reclamation decks in Standard. But now we're playing it in Modern. We're going to see just how good this card is when you sur start surrounding it with some of the best instant speed cards in the game. And I think notably, Mystical Teachings is the card that kind of breaks the mold. But on top of that, being able to hold up Cryptic Command after tapping out for this super powerful enchantment means you get to basically double your mana for the rest of the game or just hold up Cryptic Command while using the front half of your mana very easily. Yeah, you've been a staunch supporter in standard builds playing the full four chemistries inside because of how nicely the play pattern works with Wilderness Reclamation. Mm -hmm. You untap, you have four mana, you get to immediately do something good with it. And those are the two four mana cards in Modern that really synergize very nicely. Right. And then later in the game, when you have a bunch of mana, flashing back that Mystical Teachings to find another Haymaker at six mana is not really that bad. Mm -hmm. You're going to have plenty of mana to spare, so another really good card like Chemister is that you can immediately untap and, if, and uh, start sculpting your hand to set up to go over the top, and then it has some value going along just like Chemister's does with uh, Jumpstart. So, right. um, real, real good find there. Yeah, this the moment I saw it, you posted on Twitter, actually, and you're like, is this a joke? Is this Todd's alt account? You know? <laughs> and uh, it was. It I'm was, yeah. No, no, no. Me. Someone else is way smarter than me. I've just been trying to do it in standard, and I've been failing, and this person did it in, in modern, so let's see how it goes. Uh, let's take a few questions while we figure out Mulligans, if we got any. Yeah, uh, two viewers at the same time asked the same question. At wow. the same uh, time. Yeah, pork, pork, pork cop. And, pork cop. Uh, <laughs> Nice. And Jomeo. Uh, both asked about Search for Ascanta missing from the uh, Wilderness Reclamation deck. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it could potentially be good. Uh, I literally just copy-pasted this person's deck list because uh, I, I never like to change a deck before I play with it some myself. And I, I think people kind of do that uh, without really understanding why the original pilot or, or deck builder... Uh, did what they did. And I think that Search for Escanta cast on turn two means you don't get to hold up Remand or some other counterspell. And in modern, the format is so fast that 
something like Reman can become a dead card after turn two in the wrong matchups. And if you play that search for Scant on turn two, we are, while we do function like a control deck, I think for the most part, like we are way more of like a tempo deck, the way that Reclamation works, the way that Remand works. So, um, I don't know. Surge of Santa is probably good with Wilderness Reclamation, but I don't know if it's good in this deck. That's it. All right, let's 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 battle, man. I can't. Yeah, the, I can't wait. These decks are awesome. All right, your turn. <laughs> I, I lost last round. I'm going to go first. It's interesting. Um, I'm going to go to 17 off this Tarn. Get a Steam Vents. Okay. And I'm going to want to set up for a longer game, so let's suspend a Visions. Yeah. So one of the coolest things about the Electro Dominus deck is that it, normally the Cascade decks that let you play things like Restore Balance uh, kind of bottleneck how you build uh, the rest of your deck, right? Like you can't play basically one, two mana spells if you play a Cascade deck. Uh, your turn after that. Yeah. Uh, so I, th I think it's just important to note that that's why, like, the, the draw of Electro Dominance and As Foretold means that you actually get to play a normal deck that just has this cool little mini combos in it. You know? Yeah, you get to play cards like Serum Visions to set up your draw. Mm, sure. Um, I don't know if I want these. Um, okay. I don't. I don't think I want. I definitely don't want that one. But I probably want that one. Probably want the land. Uh, and I'm gonna play a Telario West and pass. Right, I'm gonna float blue blue. I'm gonna cast an opt. Uh, we are floating. gonna bottom. We're just looking for land here at this point. All right, untap. Yep. Draw. I'm gonna shock myself to 18. Seeing the lands that he has, I know that. We're not playing against a traditional control deck, so my life total is probably not in too much jeopardy. Okay, get this ancestral to two. And I feel pretty comfortable just sort of jamming into counter spells here with ancestral coming off soon, so I'll just play an as foretold. Uh as foretold will resolve. Yeah, I'll ancestral myself. Alright. In response. Uh, as blue we're black, told, blue, been used. blue black, green. Yep. Going to your your ancestor is going to resolve, but I'm going to do something. Let's abrupt decay this blue floating and uh, hieroglyph illumination cycle. Okay. Yeah. Ancestral so you filter resolves. in here to make blue green, make black with the water grave. Yep. And then you cycle hieroglyphic. So yeah, one. it's a little annoying, but um, there's not a ton we can do about it. Like we could just remand the as we're told, but then there's a chance that Ross gets to just. Uh, I mean, he could just have nothing. Like, if he he could just not have the second ancestral, and then we actually get full value out of our abrupt decay. This is what I was afraid of happening, just not hitting my land drop here. So I'm gonna grow spiral, just to dig. We hit it, and I'm gonna say go. Okay, bring this ancestral one. Yeah, let's keep jamming threats. We got a Jace. Okay, I'm going to fetch and reman. I'm going to go to 14. Or 15? 15. 15. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully we can draw something like uh, Cryptic Command off of the remand or a draw step. We're going to have to contend with that Jace and the Ancestral Visions. But we might just have to let the Ancestral Visions resolve and then just fight over the Jace. All right, so draw off yep. of the reman, untap, draw for turn. All right, let's play Wilderness Reclamation. It's pretty good. And I'll untap. Your turn. I'll ancestor myself. I will counter that and draw a card. Yep. Spend a Gargadon. Yep. Oh, he doesn't have second double red. It's good for me. He can't just light up all my lands while I'm tapped out. It's terrifying. I guess he could go ask for told and money. Really? Yeah, I quit. <laughs> this Ross picked this matchup, by the way. The Blood Moon deck against me with, I've, with I've won Blood Moon. Great. In my main deck. Cool. 
Next game, you win. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I can't do anything. My hand is dead. Okay, we're gonna take a short break while we figure out sideboards. I'm gonna punch Ross off camera. <laughs> All right, we're here for sideboarding, and from my side, uh, this pretty clean cut. Gonna be boarding out a good bit of our removal. Fatal push, devour flush. These cards are. Pretty bad. Uh, Pulse of Mirasa, my life is not really in jeopardy for the most part. And getting back a land card, while it could be pretty good alongside fetch lands, uh, I don't think that's really the game plan I want to implement. We're going to bring in a couple copies of Dispel. It's uh, really good against Electrodominance, and it can help us fight over counter wars whenever we get into uh, you know bat big battles over Cryptic Command or what have you. Uh, just cheap one-mana counter spells are really good in this style of matchup. And then we're going to bring in a Tasser of the Golden Fang and a Display of Dominance. You may want to read Display of Dominance. Destroys a blue or black non-creature permanent. Kills Jace, kills As for Told. Uh, As for Told, but notably, does not kill Blood Moon, which is important. Um, we have a couple of cards in our sideboard that could come in to potentially kill Blood Moon uh, or get rid of it. Uh, Echoing Truth, Fracturing Gust. Even though Fracturing Gust costs a significant amount of green mana, which we don't necessarily always have, um, we could potentially float a bunch of green, let the blood resolve, and then cast the Fracturing Gust. But I think that situation is just a little too yeah. tough. How, how many Abrupt Decays you got over here? Uh, two or three. And then we have and a trophy. couple of Sasha's Trophies. The one card that... Uh, sorry, there's two cards that I kind of want to bring in. That's the Echoing Truth and the Shadow of Doubt. Now, the Shadow of Doubt, uh, Ross in Game 1, he showed me uh, Fetch Land and he showed me a Talaria West. Other than that, I'm not sure if he has ways to, to search, so I don't know if I actually want to bring the Shadow Doubt, but if we snag a fetch land on the play on turn two, that's not that bad. Snagging a Teleria West is... Yeah, it's just incredible. three mana make you discard a card. So, uh, of, of the cards in my deck, it's possible that Spell Snare is not very good, um, and I was thinking about that as we were playing. I'm not uh, super familiar with Ross's deck. I know the gist, but I know that it counters Electro Dominance uh, if he's just using it for X equals zero to play a Restore Balance or an Ancestral. Um, is, I, I don't, I don't think I'm actually doing that very often. Sure. In this matchup, like I want my Electro Dominances to do something, and I'm usually setting up to, like win a counter war anyway. Okay. Well, I will but, bring in that and cut the spell snare. Um. On my side, we got a couple more Blood Moons, which are obviously going to be great. The same Dispels that Todd has to win these Counter Wars. Yeah. Uh, another big threat in Jace to increase our threat density. And then Cryptic Command, which uh, is not only just a Counter Spell that could potentially help us win Counter Wars, but also is a way to get a Wilderness Reclamation off the battlefield, if right. that becomes important. And then we're cutting our Bolts, which are obviously bad, and then the Tormod Script. And then I th Restore Balance, because this is a, a long matchup against a control deck with a lot of counter spells, I think my plan is going to be not just a jam Restore Balance when I can, because you really have to go all in on this card. You have to sacrifice the lands before you know if it's going to resolve. You have to basically know that it's going to resolve. Yeah. Because you have to sack a bunch of lands in response. Yeah. yeah. So if I get to that point, I'm going to be set up to just win that one counter war. I'm not going to need to resolve multiples of these. I have Teleria West to tutor for them. So I'm turning some of those and then Elector Dominance. So I'm just slowing my deck down a lot, and we're going to be playing the setup game, hopefully suspend an early Ancestral like I did in game one to put some pressure on Todd or gain some card advantage, make a bunch of land drops and set up for one big decisive counter war. Yeah, Ancestral Visions is particularly good against control decks, specifically because you are initiating the fight on the beginning of your turn uh, when you have all your mana untapped with a free spell. And whenever you start a chain of events, uh, like a counter war with a free spell, you're almost always going to win because you have initiated and they are reacting first. And that first reaction usually is going to involve them paying at least two mana. And if and anything after that, you know, you are basically two mana ahead as far as interaction is concerned. If you have, you know, uh, the right amount of interaction, I guess. Yeah. And so. if they decide to simply to let it resolve and not get involved in that fight, then you're going to be better equipped to just make land drops and right. continue that normal posturing game that happens in control mirrors. Okay. Uh, my hand is pretty good. We're going to be cognizant this game of Blood Moon and fetch around it if possible. Uh, but I'm definitely going to keep my opener. Uh, Ross, while he's deciding, why don't we take a question or two? Yeah. How do you guys think about, or how do you feel about the uh, living end? Uh, being in these electro decks. I mean, we saw a different version in the same 5-0 list that played the Living End, a bunch of big blue cycling creatures version uh, that had electro dominance as foretold, but instead of Restore Balance, it had uh, the other one. And that one, I think, is better against creature decks because you don't have to have any like big setup for your Greater Gargadon to get full value out of Restore Balance. But both of them effectively act as a Wrath of God. 
And uh, I, I think that filling your deck with a bunch of cards that are just one blue mana to cycle is not that bad in modern, but you can't always afford to spin your wheels. And I really like the look of this Sean McLaren deck because it does have a good amount of interaction. Yeah. And instead of those one mana cyclers, you get to play things like Opt and Serum Visions. And, right. Uh, and really to increase your consistency with much more powerful cantrip effects. So I generally prefer this because of the ability of uh, Restore Balance to function just like a uh, living end as that wrath of god effect so you don't lose out that lose out on that functionality and you do gain uh significantly in terms of your card selection all right how's your hand it's pretty solid we get to start on ancestral again and go from there nice all right well uh, let's take one more while we're just doing the opening turns where we're not really doing much of anything except playing lands sure uh what do you where do you think taxes is in the current modern meta considering it has good matchups against the top three decks when you say Death and Taxes has good matchups against the top three decks, what exactly do you mean? I mean, first of all, I don't think Death and Taxes has a good Phoenix matchup. I Agreed. could be wrong. Could be and, wrong about that, but and, I don't think so. And any deck where my gut shots are good, I feel I feel perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, as far as the other three top three decks, I think that's kind of up in the air because it was previously Ironworks, which suppressed a bunch of stuff. I also really don't like leading questions like that. Where they they assume a thing that I just don't even think is true. Yeah, I, I Death and Taxes is a pretty underpowered deck. So even if you think your cards line up line up well against other things in the metagame, you're starting from behind. Yeah. So you you have to first make up that deficit, and then maybe you can get ahead. And that's uh, it's not clear that you do. So go to nine and two. Mm-hmm. Um. Any more while we're just tanking, shuffling and whatnot? No, uh, Ruined uh, responded. He was the one who asked the last question, was talking about how it has a good matchup against Burn and Grixis Death Shadow. Um, those I mean, might I, be right. I do, I do agree that it has a good Burn and Grixis Shadow matchup, but yes. uh, I don't think that Burn is quite tier one or anything like that. So I, I don't know. All right, go. I just want to sit here and make my land drops because I have this Ancestral coming off and this Gargadon, so I already have my pressure down. There's no yeah. reason for me to press. Um, I will cast a Sleight of Hand. Sure. And... Yeah, I just want to make land drops. I don't actually think this Azrakul is particularly good. Sure. Uh, play a Canal and Pass. Go. On your end step, I will play an opt. Yep. Um, is this good? It's a good question. I don't know what it is. I don't think so. I think I just want to find more interaction at this point. So let's bottom that. Okay, let's play another opt. Sure. And this one seems better because of the way my hand is set up. So I'll keep that one. Go to my turn. Yep. Let's put this one to seven first, and now I'll ancestor myself. Try to remand it. Um, that's awkward. It's like the whole thing. <laughs> that's like my whole deck. Sure. <laughs> Draw for turn. Yeah. Playing as we're told. I will try to remand it, I guess. Get an island. So the, the typical route here is to remand your own spell in these control mirrors and effectively counter theirs and slow down. But I'm gaining so much by getting this Azrathold on the battlefield with Ancestral in hand that I'm just going to remand Todd's remand. Okay. So draw off that. Then I will Ancestral myself. Mm -hmm. And I will pass the turn. If we had hit a land drop in that scenario the bef turn before, I think we... Could have won that fight. Unfortunately, we did not. I'll draw for turn. Yep. We flooded Grove. I got the Reclamation. No, never. Never lucky. I will Abrupt Decay targeting as foretold. Uh, I cannot sacrifice enchantments to Greater Gargadon, so... Okay, your turn. No responses there. Now I feel bad about not having that other as foretold. Uh, but let's get that to six. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, have myself a 19. Are you still at 20? Did you shock at all? I don't think yeah, you did. Yeah, I played this on turn two, so I'm, I'm still at 20. Okay. Um, 
You got six in hand over there? Yep. I just want to now after see, just like playing this deck for the first time, I really just want to build a teamer version that just plays like four cryptic and four field mystic with the four reclamations. We might be on to something, chat. Suspend visions. Yeah. S suspend another Gargadon. Sure. Eventually we'll do things, I promise. Yeah. Dude, you don't you don't I'm not putting you under any pressure. This is why where your deck excels. In game ones, if your opponent is putting you under a lot of pressure, you have to dig for that quick restore balance to kill other creatures. But in a control matchup, you literally just suspend stuff, force them to do anything, and then when the shields are down, you literally just run them over with Jace and Greater Gargadon. Yep. All right, drop. Yep. Uh, your turn. I really wish I had one Teferi in this deck. And so Mage of Zalfir. Opt. Sure. Yeah, the Forgotten Teferi now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll keep that one. Go to my turn. Yeah. Okay, five, nine, three. Draw. Uh, let's sleight of hand here. Yeah. And... I'm not loving the way this deck feels. I'll say that. But I do think that we could build this deck significantly differently, and it might be great. At this point, more land ups might be a liability. So let's take this one and I think just play this other Teleria West. And pass the turn. Do not want to transmute for another ancestral and play it? Or nope. Suspend it? Okay. Well, I got five uh, cards in hand. Um, sure. I think I want to get a cheap thing, like a dispel. Um, uh, because I feel like we're going to have a big counter war in a sec. And dispel could be good, but we may need something to force the action. And logic not, at the very least could act as a more of a hard counter for two mana. Um, but our graveyard is not particularly big right now. One one type of thing I'm really missing in this deck is more one mana cantrips. Uh, we have uh, opt, but... Like, I would actually like to maybe even just play four Hieroglyphic Illumination because early you can cycle it. And then once you have Reclamation going, you just use that mana to draw two. That seems pretty sweet. So I don't know. This 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 game is going to be really tough in general. My hand is a bunch of good spells and not enough mana, so maybe we actually just get an opt and cast it. Hmm. Okay, let's do that. The old five mana opt. Yeah. I don't know what you want from me, man. I'm just playing the deck I was, you know, saw. I'm playing the deck that was built, and then I saw, and it looked cool. All right, it does look cool. To land, it's good enough. Go. So four, two, eight, draw. Yep. You got seven in hand over there. Yep. Like this is the the matchup where slide I'm. Slide of hand. Uh, slide of hand result. Sorry, I'll just shut up. Now we'll take another land. Okay. Pass. Oh, flashback. Teachings. Yep. I'll go get a dispel. And you have six cards or five? Five. All right. We're about to have a good old battle here in a turn or two. That's going to be fun on a bun. Draw for turn. Yep. Didn't draw the land, but I think we're okay. Uh, tap these four and play Reclamation. I will Cryptic Counter Draw. I will Dispel. I will Dispel your Dispel. I will Dispel your Cryptic Man. Tilt. Alright, I win? Yep. Untap, your turn. That's not good. So, uh, seven, three, one, mm -hmm. draw. Now the thing is, I don't actually have a ton to do with that extra mana. Um, Opt. Again, uh, sh sure. The Hieroglyph of Illumination would have been pretty sweet. Maybe I should have done that over the Opt, you know? 
That way now I could use Snapcaster with Hieroglyphic Illumination with my six mana. Um, uh, thinking about sacking some lands. Thinking about it. Okay. You have getting to both dispels. A turn before the vision was rough. Um, We got all day, man. I will play an as foretold. That will resolve. I will play a Jace the Mind Sculptor. In response. Uh, green, blue, floating a blue. So you have green, blue, one in pool? Yeah. Uh, I will destroy as foretold. That's a tilt. Okay. And then I'll use the blue and I will remand the chase. Okay. Pass. All right. Untap. Draw. Go to. Well, actually, 18 might be a two swings of Gargadon. Ooh, hold on. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to just like use Field of Ruin to get a land out of my deck, I guess. Which land do you want? I uh, want well, Talaire West. It's fine. It doesn't really matter. If... Agreed. And then I'll move to Incept and untap them all. I guess I should get a forest. I think I have a forest in my deck. Yeah, I do. That way, if he does draw Blood Moon, I can just ignore it. All right, and then move to untap all my stuff because we don't have any card draw. Yep. Go to my turn. Yep. Okay, I'll let these tick, the Gargadon stick down first. Yep. Then I'll ancestor myself. I will. Uh, cast Reman targeting ancestral. Yep. Draw for turn. Draw for Reman. Okay. Cards in hand. Four, five, five. Crack Tarn, 19. Yep. Blood Moon. Mm. Todd knows I have the Jace. I'm doing it this way. I lose the fetch on the Jace, but it protects my Jace from a cryptic command. Todd wants to, like, w he, it's a good chance he has, like, an abrupt gear trophy, but he'd have to float mana and... Yeah, it when, resolves. I, I know, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, you're making a really good point. I I can kill it, but if I do, it's going to be weird for me to let that Jace might just resolve. So you're not even floating green at all? No, if I float mana, you just go to the second main phase. Well, you can't cryptic once this resolves anyway. I'm not cryptic. Okay. Um. Well, I will play a Jace. Okay, I will respond. Uh, logic not for three. I'll just pay three mana, so I can't do anything with the other mana anyway. Sure. Uh, and then you can pop me with a greater garg. I can pop you with two of them if I wanted to. It's true. I don't know if that's good. I don't either. That's why I'm a 19 and not 18. Yep. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> Putting you to one just lets you use, like, you can't cryptic right now. That's true. I don't know if you have, like, wrath effects, but you're down to a single black to do that. 
you would need to have a black source in your hand to kill the blood moon first. And if it's a double black sweeper, it'd be a fun way to play this game. Let's do it. Just let's have fun, man. It's fine. Nine, nine coming in. It's, I'm definitely getting one back. The question yeah. is on the second. Um, you have to sack. All I'd be lines? down to an island. Down to an island. Okay. Um, is your hand good? Like if your I mean, hand is just two bad cards. I mean, then... you know this one. Yeah, it's bad. What's the other one? Yeah. yeah, I'm at one. Go. Unfortunately. Yeah, of course. <laughs> You're a 10. <laughs> you jerk. That's fine. <laughs> uh, I don't know what lands were tapped, but I'm not doing anything, so that right. enters untapped. Okay, sure. Uh... <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Uh, I think these are untapped, but just trying to trick me every time. Yeah, and it works like a lot because right. I just assume you're not going to do just that. Just going to assassin's trophy your greater gargadon. I and guess then... if your answers to it were trophies, I would have just had the lands anyway. Yeah, uh, actually, yeah, I'd rather have the land. I think than the because the land represents a counter on gargadon anyway. If I want it, mm -hmm. But you can just let Unless I play a longer game. Oh, I don't have a basic left in my deck. Okay, we're sacking it. Sure. <laughs> That's fine. All right, I untap my lands. It's your turn. Yeah. Let's, let's assume I knew that. Okay. I think I've underestimated Todd's ability to deal with as foretold, so I probably should have kept the one like 12 turns ago that I saw off a sleight of hand. Mm -hmm. uh, this goes to four. And an ancestral. Mm -hmm. Pass. Go. Three and three. Yup. Uh. Pass. Go. Two and two. Serum visions. Sure. Bad. This one's good. Spent. Yep. You can go. Go. One and one and three. Sure. Play a serum visions. Sure. Uh. Hmm. Do I got my creative juices flowing so bad right now? This deck is so poorly built. You can yeah. go. It's still great. There's, there's flooding. Whatever. Go. Go to two. Ancestral myself first. I you just suspended that. No. It was two behind these. Okay, sure. Whatever. I'm going to do um, the Ancestral first and the Gargadon. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to remand the Ancestral. Tilt. Gargadon. Gargadon will probably resolve because <laughs> I have no blue mana untapped. Off turn. Mm -hmm. Playing as we're told. Sure. You win. How do I win? You just get the intestinal for free because it's in your hand. Yeah. Yeah. But I like I don't see how that leads to me winning. I don't know, man, because my hand is two lands. <laughs> to attack you for nine. Uh I'm gonna go to one. Pass. Electro dominance me for one, man. That I haven't drawn one yet. <laughs> Weird. All right, attack for two. I'll go to 17. Time walk. <laughs> yeah. Play my land for turn. Untap all my lands <laughs> twice. This deck, okay, so here's the thing. This is the problem with Wilderness Reclamation. This is why it's not looking very good. This deck does a great job of stalling your opponent out early, like we had a bunch of counter spells and, and whatnots, but we don't have anything to go late. You know, we had we drew the one mystical teachings, uh, we haven't drawn a cryptic yeah. man, and we just have a ton of mana with nothing to do with it. And I think that you solve that by having cards that are good both early and late game, like Snapcaster Mage, like Hieroglyphic Illumination, um, and then you get to a point in the game where you actually can abuse the, the extra mana from Reclamation uh, while still having cards that are functional otherwise. Okay, growth spiral. 
Woo. Woo. All right. Uh, I'm going to attack for two. Fifteen. Uh, intercept trigger reclamation. I'm going to float a million, but a blue, blue is yeah. the important one. Blue, black, and a bunch of red. Okay. And then I'm going to... Teachings? No. I'm going to... Cryptic command? Yep. Uh, so bounce guard. So you, you don't need guard. to tap the delta. You have a bunch of red floating. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You win. I quit. I was going to restore balance now that I, that I can sacrifice ten lands. <laughs> <laughs> I'm exactly ten. So that was just me getting buried by ancestral visions, uh, but also just reclamation being a battery with nothing to spend the energy on. Um, that game obviously had reclamation going forever, and if I had fa like I drew the the um, what you call it the thing this in my deck the mystical wilderness. teachings. I yeah. drew the mystical teachings before I drew the uh, wilderness reclamation, which would have been significantly better in the yeah. other order. You also had to use it early to even like set up the reclamation every yeah, resolve. Just, oh, I had to do it just to cast an opt, just yeah. so I could hit land drops, because I was like... And then find the dispel to resolve it, and then if you if you had found one more teachings there, I think you're good to go. Yeah. Because you can start teachings for teachings. Well, I can teachings for blue sun zenith, and yeah. then I can blue sun zenith for a bunch, but uh, then I still have to figure out a way to deal with the blood moon, though, because I I was taxed very thin because of you hitting me on the card draw uh, metric, uh, having to deal with your permanents, like as foretold, and... Uh, Jace the Mind Sculptor, and then the Greater Gargon is eventually killing me, but not, I mean, at any point that I make a mistake, you can literally just 18 me, you know? Yeah. So I have to be very careful on that. And if you, you draw, like, multiple dispels or whatever, you can afford to just shove, go all in for 18, and then just dispel, dispel, and I lose, you know? Um, and the game went long enough where that was like a very distinct possibility. Um, I think this matchup really showcased the, the the diversity in your deck because the restore balance part of your deck did not even come into play, and you beat me very easily. Yeah, it, it looks like a combo deck, but you can really play this long game mm -hmm. uh, and just grind out a control deck, and uh, especially in game one when they have those, this bad removal, uh, and you've got cheap counters, and you eventually just kill them between getting a, like one Gargadon swing in and resolving a big Electro Dominance. You just have w weird ways to get there, even though the deck looks like it's very threat light. Like, so once you're ahead on cards, you just, you just set it up. To me, what your deck looks like is uh, like a Blue Moon control deck, but you have this uh, combo style finish if you want it. Um, you also have uh, just a, a one-sided obliterate with balance, Restore Balance plus Greater Gargadon that decks without counter spells don't have a a really good way to interact with. And I think that the the deck really draws its strengths from being uh, like a versatile uh, combo or control deck. And you can even sideboard in such a way, or at least build the sideboard in such a way where you can put a huge emphasis on one part of your deck as opposed to the other. Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see a completely transformational sideboard into like a Blue Moon control deck. You know, like uh, Karanos, some more Blood Moons, Anger of the Gods, a Braid. And then you can just, you know, in some matchups, you, you actually just have the capability to board out either all of your control elements and be full Restore Balance combo, or all of your com uh, combo elements and be just a Blue Moon control deck. I do think this deck is fairly weak to uh, things like Thalia, um, yeah, but you do have bolts and, and stuff like that that you can play. Like, yeah, you it's know. got two bolts in the main, and then you have two braids and two angers in the sideboard. Uh, but I, I can see you struggling with a lot of the disruptive elements from humans because you take a lot of some time to set up. Yes, and then you've got these bad counter spells. But luckily for you, humans is a bit on the downswing recently. Yeah, um, I haven't played against a human deck in a modern tournament in uh, almost two months. But uh, you know, things could change now that Ironworks is gone, and uh, there, there actually were a couple of humans printed from Ravnica Allegiance that could potentially make a splash. Um, I know that people were relatively excited about uh, Lavinia when she was first previewed, but you know. I don't think it's that good. Yeah. Also, the, the ability for Electro Dominance to uh, cast Restore Balance at instant speed makes it difficult for aggressive decks to tap out. Mm -hmm. Even if they're tapping out for uh, like uh, disruptive elements or they're tapping out on the end of your turn with things like Collected Company out of Spirits, like that Electro Dominance threat is the same thing as Violent Outburst out of uh, Living End. Once it, the threat of it is there, like, do I go for this collecting company or do I have to hold it up and give you more time by not advancing my battlefield? So uh, that, it's a tough deck to play against because you're capable of doing so many different things. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons why we've seen versatility sort of become a hallmark in, in deck building in uh, recent years, especially in standard, but this does it pr very well in modern without really sacrificing power level because the combos when they come together are incredibly powerful. Yeah. 
All right. Well, uh, we're we're just gonna call it. Uh, we can we take got, maybe we got a ten few, minutes. We got ten minutes. We'll take a few questions here. We're not gonna play another game. I think that was a resounding in favor of the electro dominance deck, and it really showcased what you can do. It was and it also an electro dominance, an electro dominant performance. Yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm just going to sit here. <laughs> okay, Kyle, what, we got some questions over there. Yeah, uh, one just came in. Um, before I ask that one, a few people have asked throughout the show, um, Does what do you think about Is It Phoenix adding another color, maybe splashing for another color in the new modern format? Sure. I mean, there's always that option, you know, if there are, those are the cards you want, and it's perfectly fine to run that splash. I, I've done it with a couple different colors. I, I think... Between me and Eli Cassis, I think we've splashed every color. I started on black and moved to white. He has green. So yeah, the original versions having collective brutality actually I just forgot those existed. And which is I weird. mean that was just me one time the first time I played the well, deck. That was like the first time I saw a deck on on Magic Online. Okay. Um, regardless, they're all perfectly fine options. Um, I do think the white splash is the best one right now. I think Path to Exile being so good against Shadow is really nice. And if these word decks come up, Stony Silence is essentially the best card against them. Well, um, I mean, I actually don't think the Black Splash is all that bad right now. I mean, Collective Brutality against Burn is obviously like a home run. It, it's awkward to splash for it against Burn, though, because you're going to shock yourself in order to be able to cast it. Sure, that makes sense. Uh, so that's a problem. So if I'm splashing for a card against Burn, I want it to have a huge effect. And so the card I'm thinking about is white, and it's Phyrexian on life. Doesn't get skull cracked, comes down on turn three before you die. It usually gains 10, 12 life. Yeah. And and actually, um, once you're below 10 when they're trying to kill you with poison, the bump in the night effect doesn't do anything because it doesn't deal damage. <laughs> so it can gain even more. So that that's the card that I would look to if you're really worried about burn. I think Phyrexian on life is great in that matchup. Yeah, I think a lot of people go directly to timely reinforcements, myself included, when we were talking about white sideboard cards earlier today. Uh, but I think, yeah, Phyrexian on life could just be the the nuts in that scenario because it's not like they're not going to board in disenchants against you because you have no artifacts or enchantments in your main deck. And that's really when those types of cards shine is when you basically pull a switcheroo and your opponent has uh, to worry about a certain type of permanent or uh, just a spell subtype that they might not normally be worried about. Yeah. I could also see going with Leyline of Sanctity, which is a card you don't necessarily, you don't have to splash for, but it shows up in your opening hand, probably ends the game against Burn. Yep. And then you can actually, you actually can hard cast it with Manamorphose. Right. And hard casting on turn four, like, once you've dealt with their creatures, might just stop them from killing you. Yeah. No, that's definitely true. So, um, I've always been a pretty big fan of Leyline of Sanctity. And at the very least, if you're splashing white, I think a, a Miser's one of Leyline of Sanctity is never a bad idea. If you, you, know, you just board it in in matchups where they have just like 20 discard spells or against burn, and if it's in your opening hand, it just blanks like half their stuff. Yeah. And if it's not in your opening hand, you just pitch it to force, to not force. <laughs> no, close enough. P pitch it to Faithless it looting. looting. It's close enough. You just, you just pitch it away. Yeah, so I, I'm I'm a strong proponent of the single thin ley lines and sideboards. I know a lot of people think it's those cards are sort of four of or bust, mm -hmm. but uh, in reality, like I have a long explanation about this. But I'm a fan of the single thin. I won't go into it. All right, next question. How do you feel about Judith uh, in humans? I do not want to play a creature in humans that requires. Uh, two of your off colors. Yeah, beyond Mantis Rider. Like, you don't want to play too many of them. Yeah, well, okay, so Mantis Rider needs effectively uh, one of your, like, Seacrum Coasts as well as, like, one of your Humans Lands, right? Like, you, yeah. can't, you can't usually play it off of... Uh, it, it's the one planes and the four canopies. Right. Usually you have either one island and one Seacrum or two Seacrums. Right. So you need... The problem is when you have two, two of those five. Two canopies means you can't cast Manus Rider. It also means you can't cast Judith. But uh, and, and Judith it includes all the the blue and white lands as well. So any right. two of those seven, and you can't cast it. So you have you have to either change your mana base significantly, like to play Reflecting Pool instead. But then you lose the you lose out on Horizon Canopy being so powerful in the deck and just giving you uh, this land that turns into a fresh card whenever you have Ether Vial on the battlefield. Yeah. So. Judith, obviously a very strong card, very good effect, but I don't even know how good it is in yeah. modern because, you know, if your opponent's killing your creatures, th they're going to focus on your ones and twos, and 
and those are the ones that you need to hit the hardest. Uh, and then three, you need them to be like these standalone threats or do something super unique, like Reflector Mage being able to buy you a lot of time, really stifle the development of like Death Shadow or Thing in the Ice. Uh, Manus Rider hitting super hard by itself also has flying, which is a huge deal and probably the best part of the card. Um, and, and Judith, you know, it pumps all your, your little stuff, but you already have that effect. Like you can just play mayor of Averbrook and that's effectively the same thing. It costs one less mana. And I think that that effect is actually better on two than it is on three, even with the added ability from Judith. Yeah. The added ability from Judith, I don't think comes up that often. Mm -hmm. The premier control deck or most popular one is Azorius and they play Terminus as their primary sweeper. The Jeskai decks have enough spot removal that they can handle the Judith first. So you get one extra damage out of it. Not really that impressive. Yep. And the added toughness on Mayor of Averbrook actually lets you get into combat more effectively. Yep. You know, the, the the pings also do help there, but is the difference there worth the added headache of putting this three drop with awkward mana in your deck? I don't think so. Yep. Uh, all right, one more. Uh, how do you feel, uh, or do you have any ideas about a rhythm, in the, rhythm of the Wild deck in Modern? I mean, have, I'll... have you seen this? Have you heard this? Have you seen this? Have you, you used it like the way people are using it? With Vanifar? Uh, sometimes with Vanifar, but I've seen it more often with the <laughs> sort of old Malira combo in place of Malira, because you can just put the plus one, plus one counter on it, and then it gives some of the other creatures haste, which has relevance, and makes your creatures uncounterable. The problem here is when you're playing this creature combo deck where all of your tutors find creatures, you need every single one of your combo pieces to be a creature, or at least have some number of them. So if you wanted to play Rhythm because it's a good card in the deck, you could do that, but don't cut your Maliras or your Anafenza, whichever other or at least leave combo one piece or two that you can yeah. court of calling leave, for. Leave one that you can court for. So you, you have to do that. That's at the baseline. Other than that, it seems interesting to me. I wonder if you could end up with like a Rhythm of the Wild, Devoted Druid, Court of Calling, like commune with nature all the different creature combos they can all come at haste at haste somehow is commune with nature just creature yeah right one man so, top five so the new split card incubation incongruity is literally just better sure yeah sure i, just, I was just making sure commune couldn't get like a land or something stupid too like yeah i don't think it can so this okay. if, if that's the case i don't know do whichever one you need to do just play commune maybe you still just you want adventurous impulse so you can find lands if you need it but that, that style of deck. I wouldn't play Collected Company in it because you're a hard combo deck. You're not really valuing anyone out. Yep. Something like that is kind of interesting. I mean, I think Rhythm of the Wild is, is interesting for me because it gives creatures haste, but I didn't even think about the fact that all your stuff has Riot. So, yeah, like the Infinite with Kitchen Finks uh, seems pretty cool. Like if you have that, Kitchen Finks, the Viscera here, it just gains infinite life. So, yeah, just replacing the Malira, uh, but also having a card that gives your Vanifar haste. That's, I mean, that that... That might be it, you know? Yeah. That yeah. might be the, the Vanifar and, deck. And all your creatures are encounterable, right. so... Like, yeah, maybe. So I don't know how you make the mana work in your... Well, people... I mean, Jeff Hoogland's been playing Kiki Jiki, <laughs> Restoration Angel, uh, like, you know, Voice Resurgence for years or whatever. Yeah, so. Court of Calling is what makes the mana work, I guess. But if you're playing Prime Speaker 2 and you have Viscera Seer, you probably only have the one Seer. I don't know. There's probably some other stack outlet you can play, but... Yeah. It, I'm, I'm a mildly interested, but honestly... I have yet to see a creature combo deck in that vein that to me looks better than Selesnia Elves because Selesnia Elves gets to put a creature combo into its deck it's so clean lord deck. Yeah. Yeah. Devoted Druid is a good card in that deck. Mm -hmm. Actively good. Yeah, just let without a without a land drop, it just lets you cast collect a company with two yep. lands in it. And it's really good with Azuri. Sometimes you just naturally have a board of elves and it's like oh, some and extra mana and then you, it pumps. you know how good it is because in retrospect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the uh the two man like you that's a dig. You, you can go off with two devoted druids, or if you're just trying to nat, like sort of short kill them. Yeah. When you activate Azuri with your wait, is two devoted druids just infinite. Yeah. If you can act, if you have enough to get the initial activation to seed it, once you activate, you get six extra mana from the two devoted druids. Hmm, that's cool. Yeah. You just go and then, but if you only have the one devoted druid and you have some mana lying around, you can activate it, and then you get three extra mana off that devoted druid. You that often leads to a second activation, and yeah. that probably kills them. Mm -hmm. So you short kill a lot, and it's uh, most people don't see it coming. Mm -hmm. So you end up being this good Azuri combo deck with Devoted Druid just being a good elf in the deck, and then you play one Vizier. So I, like all these other creature combo decks look really awkward. They have to play a bunch of really bad individual cards. So when their combo gets broken up, they don't do much. The elf deck still has Azuri, uh, yeah, Elvish Elvish Druid. Druid. I mean, you, you're just a normal beatdown deck yeah. in a lot of spots. So that uh, happens a lot. The, the fact that, I, that that bar exists is, makes me really skeptical of the other creature combo decks. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling generous. Let's do one more. 
Uh, all right. Um, I feel like Kyle about... didn't expect this. <laughs> I didn't. I've got like the outro cue. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, how do you feel about uh, a human's deck with Hero of Precinct 1? Maybe using more multicolor creatures. The, the issue here is that the cards you want to pair with a token generator are extra lords, and none of the lords are multicolored. Except for Judith. <laughs> Um, also in your, in an Aether Vile deck, often the way you're double oh, yeah, spelling, you're not casting. You're not casting. Mm. So there's a lot of awkwardness here. Mm. I think if you want to build around Hero Precinct 1, like maybe you can. Yeah, I mean, we, we've already seen it do a lot of work, both, uh, against control decks being a little more aggressive, uh, in your mid-range strat, or against, uh, aggro decks being really defensive. And I don't know if that's necessarily... Uh, the place you ever want to be in modern because combo decks just kind of run you over when you start yeah. doing that. Affinity decks, walking Blizzard just kind of go way over the top. You're also like already afraid of sweepers in your humans deck, so you're just sort of playing into them. Not only does Hero just make more tokens that get swept so, up, but you're also encouraged to extend more to the board to get more value. I will say this. Here, Precinct 1 plus Blinding Helix. It's pretty good. I, I like it when Roth does that face. It's pretty good. That's now. Now we're thinking. <laughs> there it is. Electrolyze. It's pretty good. Pretty I, I always want to pair it with one mana spells that are multicolored somehow. Sure. I want to be pairing this card with like Carnival and I don't know what other good ones exist in modern. I, I can't think of any multicolor one mana card. Yeah. Wild Canter. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, not um, so much. I don't know. I any want of, like spells that have an effect too. Yeah. Anyway, we're done. That's it. That's all for us. Uh, this was uh, a pretty fun day. We we got to see some some new decks. Uh, one of which functioned really well, which I liked, and one of which uh, struggled a bit uh, for reasons that I think can be solved. And and I, I like the the discussion that we had on how to yeah, solve it. I think your idea with either. hieroglyphic illumination and other cards that are good early, good late makes a lot of sense. Yeah, split cards, uh, cards that have two di basically two different functionalities. Hieroglyphic illumination, the perfect example. Snapcaster Mage, also a great example. Um, you know, mystical teachings might be it. It might be the best way. But for me, I think I want to lean way more towards cryptic command because I think that that velocity that you generate uh, is something that you can easily leverage into a win. And you need to figure out uh, effectively, like, which are the best flash creatures to play. Um, you know, maybe something like Sorak Dragon Claw could be pretty cool in the deck. Uh, Frilled Mystic seems like it could be good. I don't know if you want to do, like, Frilled Mystic and Mystic Snake. Like, it might be being a little too four mana heavy. But I think four mana is the sweet spot. And having some amount of fours, I think, is important. And maybe it's just Cryptic, Frilled, Wilderness. And then Hieroglyphic can be a split. Snapcaster can be a split. And then the rest of your deck, I don't know. Maybe you play four copies of Expansion Explosion because the front half can copy a Lightning Bolt and kill two creatures. And then, you know, let's Fireball for six and draw six cards. I have a problem. <laughs> I have a problem. I know I have a problem. Where have Ross? I heard this before? <laughs> Well, I'm gonna let Todd get to brewing with Wilderness Reclamation, Thanks. and you know, maybe you're you're not playing this weekend anymore because you're doing commentary. Yeah, I had to uh, take the the place of a, a sick Jerry Thompson, so I'll be in Baltimore alongside Brian Gottlieb doing commentary. Uh, we'll also have uh, Rhino, or no, sorry, have Matthias Hunt and Emma Handy as our other cohorts. Well, we're not seeing modern after this on the SAG tour for a while, though. Dallas is standard, Syracuse is legacy in the beginning of March, so. You got you got a lot of time to work out the kinks in this wilderness reclamation archetype. Well, you know what? Take you know, modern you know by what storm. they say: if you can't beat them, you're probably playing my deck. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, so I've had I've had a lot of fun bringing with wilderness reclamation. And it doesn't stop now. I think the card's messed up, and the fact that we already have one five zero from it, we already have uh, multiple five zeros from the Electrodominus deck. Some of these new cards from Ravnica Legions are the real deal, and these are just the rough drafts, and it'll it'll only get better or only get worse from here. And <laughs> and uh, we're gonna see just it could, what it it could also do. stay the same. Could stay the same. Those are the three options. Yes. Okay, we're clearly derailed here. We're gonna cut it off. We're gonna let Todd get to brew it with Wilderness Reclamation. I'm gonna get to sleep because I have an early train to Baltimore. Have fun. Okay. Bye. <laughs>